Okay, so let's just wait for the others to join in. Could you share screen for the group one already? So I shared with your LO the YouTube link. If you cannot join the Zoom, please ask your classmates to join the YouTube link. Uh, doctor, do we have to screen share the video recording or uh, present it live now? It's live now. So um, those who cannot join the Zoom meeting, please join the YouTube link. I sent it to your Viber. Huh? Uh, doctor, uh, like uh, groups have uh, submitted their video recording uh, of the presentation. So, shall we screen share it uh, here now yes. or what? Yes, screen share it. Okay, doctor. Then let's watch the group one. Uh, so, we have to start it by group one? Any group, okay. Any group, okay. Yes.
फर्स्ट नंबर पे तुम्हारा ही नेम था उसमें इसमें रिसर्च साइकोलॉजी इसमें भाई इसको बनाना था ना एसपीएस नहीं Okay, in your chat box is the YouTube link. If your classmates cannot join this Zoom account, please join through YouTube so that you could see the discussion as well. But the presenters of the current group being presented, please be in the Zoom account. Okay, so let's start. So we've assigned you your family case presentation. So let us see your output for this particular activity. Okay, you may share screen. என்ன <laughs> 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 <laughs>
okay uh, sorry guys actually i'll screen uh, start the screen sharing again okay hello 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 okay ji okay, okay. everyone kindly mute yourself <laughs> mute it now okay just give me 3 minutes doctor okay zoom is full so just join the youtube channel so that you could join the discussion so you could hear the videos being discussed <laughs> यार ग्रुप डॉक्टर ग्रुप विल शेयर इट फर्स्ट प्रथम इन दिस मीटिंग इट्स ओके इट्स ओके यस हेलो डॉक्टर या मीटिंग आई विल विल प्ले वीडियो वीडियो स्टार्ट द हिज स्क्रीन शेयरिंग हिज फर्स्ट A warm welcome to Doc Andres and my batchmate. My name is Prathamesh Patel from Group 21. Our family case presentation was formulated by gathering information on an index patient who has rheumatoid arthritis in her family. We covered all the necessary objectives to help our case. Now let's start with our main agenda here. Here's the outline for our four main objectives. Number one, to formulate, implement, and discuss a patient-centered health management plan. Number two, to describe the family psychodynamics using widely used family assessment tools like family tree or genogram, family map, family app card, screen, and family lifeline. Third, to describe the social environment, its resources, and hindrances to a successful wellness plan. Number four, to be able to formulate a family wellness plan. patients have often expressed concern about their ability to take care for themselves after discharge now moving on to the next objective which is the outline covering index case profile data of the family and at last the family wellness plan devised for every member of the family our third objective is the index profile of the mother of the family who is also our index patient mrs jane doe is a 45 year old roman catholic and she is married She is a housewife and works part time as a tutor for elementary kids. As per OB history, she has had zero abortions and two parity and gravita. Understanding her chief complaint here, which is pain, swelling in her fingers, morning stiffness, and brain fog. Now, let us walk through Mrs. Jane Doe's history of illness, which has manifested in a span of eight years. In two thousand eight, she first experienced pain in the back and sometimes in her hands. 
Later, in 2010, the pain increased along with swelling in her fingers. She started her medication for rheumatoid arthritis factor, methotrexacate 2.5 mg, 1 tablet per day and celecoxib 100 mg, 2 tablets per day. Mrs. Doe had no further follow-up till 2012, but in 2014, the manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis flared up, causing her extreme pain and swelling. From 2015, she has been experiencing dizziness where overworked pain and swelling in her fingers. To carry on to our next topic of focus, that is, family medical history. Which is of the patriarch of the family, 46-year-old Mr. John Doe was diagnosed with hypertension back in 2012. His father passed away due to hypertension at 76 and his mother died at 76 due to car accident, death on arrival and she had suffered from rheumatoid arthritis. Mr. Doe's father-in-law and mother-in-law both died due to hypertension. His first child, a 26-year-old son, has complained of difficulty in breathing due to incessant smoking and occasional drinking. His second child, a 17-year-old daughter, has been experiencing early signs of rheumatoid arthritis. Now, moving on to our next topic. Hello everyone. We will see the obstetric history, personal history, physical examination and the assessment plan of our patient, Mrs. Zendo. So now, we will see the obstetric history of the patient. Her first menstrual cycle, that is her first minarch, started at the age of 15 years. She doesn't have regular menstrual cycle. Her cycle is disturbed with an irregular interval of 2-3 to three months. She has been pregnant 2 times and has successfully delivered 2 children, 1 girl and 1 boy. Now we will know about her personal and social history. She is a college undergraduate. She lives with her husband and has one dependent child. She works as a part-time tutor and earns around 4,000 pesos per month. About her physical examination. She is conscious and coherent, has no cardiorespiratory distress. She is perfectly healthy with normal blood pressure, normal heart rate, normal temperature. Even her BMI is also normal. She has good skin texture without any signs of paler and sinuses. Her bowel sounds completely normal, soft and non-tender and no organomegaly. But sometimes swellings can be seen in her fingers with deformation in her MCP and DCP joints without any change in the pulses. Assessment plans. She was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. She was prescribed with 2.5 mg of methotrexate that is one tablet per day and 100 mg of celecoxib that is two tablets per day. For her pain management, she has been taking proper diet with regular exercise. She also uses aloe vera as a topical solution for her swelling as in traditional practices. Now coming to the family assessment. Let's start with the type of family the does belong to. They are a nuclear middle class family with an ordinal position of 3. Going to the next part which is the family identification. Mr. Doe is 48 years old and his wife is of age 47. The first child is of 26 years old and unmarried and the second and youngest child is of 17 years and unmarried as well. Moving to the house structure. The Doe family own a house made up of light wood and cement which consists of just two rooms. The Doe family own a house made up of light wood and cement which consists of just two rooms. Mr. Doe is an elementary graduate and is a factory worker while his wife is a college undergraduate and works part-time as an elementary school tutor. Their eldest son is a high school graduate and works in Dubai while their youngest child is currently enrolled in high school. Let's take a look at the community history next. It is seen that Ms. Doe maintains a good relation with neighbors. It is also noted that she takes money with a set interest whenever they have a financial crisis. Moving to the next slide, let's have a look at this interesting genogram made to show the Doe family. Rectangle represents a male and circle indicates a female. Jane can be seen as one of the four kids in her own family and is the index patient, while Joan can be seen having three siblings of his own. Both of them are shown to be getting married and having two kids at present, in which the younger child is seen having early symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. Now, let's take a deeper dive into the family timeline. In unforeseen circumstances, John Doe's family passed away in the year 2008. It can be seen that in the next year, which is 2009, both of Jane Doe's parents died. Her father passed away at the age of 76 because of hypertension and her mother cause of death was a car accident. In the year 2010, Ms. Doe was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Just the next year, John's siblings passed away due to complications related to hypertension. The following year, Mr. Doe was unfortunately diagnosed with hypertension. Now let's take a closer look at the family life cycle stages. Jane Doe's first child can be classified as belonging to an unattached young adult. Job employment and living accommodation are the first order changes. Differentiation of the self in relation to family of origin and establishment of self in work and supporting family are some noticeable second order changes. Ms. Doe is seen to be having a greater say when it comes to the financial decisions related to their family. 
it should also be noted that the youngest child has started showing early symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. Family Psychodynamics The Family Psychodynamics is an approach that includes all the theories of psychology that see human functioning based upon the interaction of drivers and forces within the person. There are four assessment tools that one can use to assess psychodynamics within a family. They are Family Map, Psychosocial Data, Apgar and Screen. Let's discuss each briefly. Family Map a family map is a tool that reflects familial relationships and patterned interactions between them. The family map systematically identifies areas of concern and strength. All members within the family get along very well. To explain family dynamics, we'll be using the Doe family, which consists of Mr. and Mrs. Doe and their two children. It is a very highly functional family with an open communication and no differences between members. Let's discuss the psychosocial data of this family. Psychosocial data is a compiled psychosocial summary within the family. In reference to context of the Doe family, with regard to communication patterns, Mr. and Mrs. Doe have an open communication with their children, and their children find them very approachable to discuss their problems. Both the parents, Mr. and Mrs. Doe, share leadership, being the breadwinner. Both Mr. and Mrs. Doe share this category as their net income of 7,000 to 8,000 pesos. The couple equally share authority, like most other traits and activities they're involved in. The primary caregiver within the family is also a shared title by both the parents. The family's present priorities are Mrs. Jane Doe's health issue of hypertension. There are two questionnaires of APCA, APCA 1 and APCA 2. The APCA 1 scale assists in determining the level of patient satisfaction or dissatisfaction with family function. Mrs. Jane Doe has a score of 10. Why Mr. John Doe also has a score of 10. Their son has a total score of 9 while their daughter also has a total score of 9. A combined score total of 8 to 10 points is an indication of a highly functional family. Let's move forward to the next assessment tool that is screen. That represents family resources, tool where the physician helps the family identify and assess their resources to meet a crisis situation. Social, resource and pathology. Nuclear type of family, Mrs. Jane Doe is a housewife and a part-time elementary school teacher and a wonderful mother to two children. Good and open relationship between all the members of the family. Sundays get together and barbecues happen quite frequently. Culture, resource and pathology. Family identify themselves as Roman Catholics. Sent as a statue of Jesus Christ as a gift representing their culture. Taught us terms in their native Bataan dialect of Tagalog. Next alphabet is R. Religious, resource and pathology. A very religious family who have strong beliefs and morals. Try their best to attend church together as a family on Sundays. Economic, resource and pathology. Economically unstable household, main source of income is from Mr. John Doe as a factory worker. Secondary sources of income include 4,000 pesos from Mrs. Jane Doe as a part-time elementary tutor and the sum that their elder son sends every month. Next alphabet is E for education. Education, resource and pathology. Mr. John Doe is an elementary graduate. Mrs. Joy Jane Doe is a college undergraduate. Elder son is a high school graduate. Young son is enrolled in high school at present. Medical. Resource and pathology. The Doe's family have a very bad health-seeking behavior. Healthcare is not easily available due to area they live in. Uh, hello everyone, so I will be discussing about proper family wellness plan. As Mrs. Jane Doe suffering from rheumatoid arthritis, there may be times when someone's rheumatoid arthritis symptoms get worse and other times when they feel great. For screening one tablet per day, methotroxy 2.5 mg with occasional NSID would be great. For developmental monitoring, at least one and a half month of therapy might be required before full therapeutic effects are achieved. As for exercise prescription, yoga and brisk walking for 30 to 45 minutes every day. A proper diet with less salty and fatty food with 8 for Mr. John Doe, he is having screening one tablet of Captopril 50 mg and bed rest with continuous BP monitoring for first three hours, and at least three weeks of therapy may be required before full therapeutic effects are achieved. Again, for exercise prescription, brisk walking and cycling will be enough. For diet prescription, salt intake should not exceed more than three grams or above, uh, like a half teaspoon per day. In short, low consumption of uh, salty and oily food. As for the elder son, he is having breathing problem as he was in a smoke addict. The target is to quit smoking. As for exercise prescription, regular cardio exercise with meditation is good. For diet well balanced, protein rich diet and uh, especially greeny leafy vegetable with citrus and rich fruits are good. Uh, as for the younger daughter, unfortunately, she might be the carrier of uh, the rheumatoid arthritis from her mother. For screening, she is on early stages of diagnosis. Ongoing stage of multiple tests and lab reports will help identifying the problem. As for exercise, regular hand joint exercise with cardio like cycling <laughs> will be enough. At last, for diet and sleep, consumption of a well balanced protein rich diet and uh, lesser in salty and olive food with a proper rest of 8 hours is very much required. Thank you. 
summarizing the case. It is also important to acknowledge the concepts of health because they inform an individual's capacity to self-care and manage their own health, which can subsequently reduce the burden on healthcare services. Family must take necessary measures to control and lessen the risk factors associated with RA. One of the environmental factors is diet. The rheumatoid arthritis patients' adherence to a healthy diet remains low, despite plentiful data confirming positive effects of some foods. In case of insufficient family income, a budget for health benefits must be planned. Family must that? encourage attendance at educational program and other livelihood programs. Sustainable livelihood provide access to basic needs, the opportunity to thrive, etc. Practice of proper lifestyle with regards to physical fitness is important. Regular exercise is one of the best things you can do for your health. It has many benefits, including improving your overall health and fitness and reducing your risk for many chronic diseases. Thank you everyone. We group 21 thank Doc Andres and to all our batchmates for their time. Sorry, I got disconnected. Okay, so we see a case of rheumatoid arthritis and you see that family history is strong. The daughter starting to have your rheumatoid arthritis. So we have to uh, follow up on this patient. Okay, so your genogram could be improved. As I saw, as I saw in your genogram, you did not follow the usual um legends for uh what a genogram follows like your index patient it should be the, denoted by an arrow for example at the death hand of the patient so uh your genogram could still be improved well your apgar your scream your family life cycle where um done appropriately uh the do the pay, who's in dubai who is the ofw the daughter uh no ma'am it's the uh elder son who it's the eldest the son so is she the one also supporting sending money right and you know that um medicines checkups could be expensive so such that and you mentioned that their economic stability would not be as good okay the income could you imagine four thousand pesos where will four thousand bring you nowadays okay so you have to um look for ways wherein they could uh, access public health services so that they could have extensive um value for their money you could say that they could go to the health center etc so that they could get uh, proper health care at least free consult etc then consult a private hospital or do a private checkup which would cost them money okay okay good job group 21 let's have our next group so you have to know your rheumatoid arthritis yes doctor yes. we are going to share for the next uh kind of okay. uh, group 11 can you please give us the permission to share our screen? Uh, did, was it reset? Yes, okay, there is. Okay, share. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, my dear batchmates, I am Nithya from Group 11. Our family case presentation aims to cover all necessary objectives on our index patient who has hemophilia in family. We hope the gathered information is positively formulated to our viewers. First of all, our specific objectives. To formulate, implement, and discuss patient-centered health management plan. And then using family assessment tools, describe family psychodynamics. Also to formulate family wellness plan and discuss resources and hindrances of social environment according to it. Outline, index case profile, the family, and family wellness plan. So here comes index profile. Daniel is 40 year aged married Filipino. He is Catholic Christian and is a grocery, a grocery store owner. So what are his complaints? He developed repeated bleeding into joints in his right ankle. Now problems he may encounter. 
Joint bleeding can lead to chronic joint disease with extreme pain. Bleeding in head and brain can cause seizures and paralysis. And at extreme, death can occur if brain bleeding doesn't stop. Now let's see the medical history of the family. Andrea Hickmans Johnson is a hemophilic carrier. Her two brothers had severe hemophilia in the family. Her son also had hemophilia, but fortunately, her son's daughter is all her son's son is not affected, and daughter is also a carrier. Moving on to their family and social history. Andrea has a very big supportive family who are always there to help her, even at the time of Daniel's treatment in the hospital. When we examined Daniel, we found out that he was conscious coherent. His BP was normal, that is 120 by 180. Heart rate was 66, respiratory rate 18. Temperature was found out to be 36.7. His weight was 70 kg, height 160 cm and BMI was 27.3. He had good skin turgor, no pallor, no cyanosis, but he had swelling and painful thighs, tightness of joints and blood buildup in the body. Moving on to signs and symptoms, a few among those were bleeding within joints that can lead to chronic joint disease and pain, repeated bleeding into the same joint, bleeding of mouth and gums, and bleeding that is hard to stop after losing a tooth, bleeding after having shots such as vaccinations. Assessment or plan, among which diagnosis of screening tests like complete blood count, activated partial thromboplastin time test, APTT, thrombo thrombin time test, PT, fibrogen test. Talking about treatment, Recombinant factor H concentrate, hemlimbra, also known as ACE910 or MEC Zumbmab, DDAV or Stimate, Amicar, Cryopeptide. Moving on to non pharmacologic, iron rich foods, vitamin containing food items. Diagnosis. Diagnosis includes screening tests. Screening tests are blood tests that show if the blood is clotting properly. Types of screening tests, tests are complete blood count, activated partial thromboplastin time test, thrombin time test, fibrogen test. Moving on to our medication, the therapeutic drugs are Hemlimbra, DDAVP or Stimate, Amicar, Cryoprecipitate. Blood clot clotting factor products, recombinant factor 8, concentrate is genetically engineered during DNA technology. So now coming to family profile. So Andrea and Daniel's daughter, they are hemophilic carrier. Andrea's brothers and Daniel are suffering from hemophilia. Target joint is the right ankle of Daniel and there is no kidney problem and diabetes running in the family. So now coming to genogram. So basically it determines the set of genes a family having. So in this, we can see that Andrea is a hemophilic carrier and having one defective allele, which is responsible for the Daniel's disease. Daniel is a hemophilic person because he is receiving that defective allele from his mother. So this shows the crisscross inheritance in which defective allele transfers from mother to son and father to daughter. Daniel's daughter is normal. As she is carrier, she is not exhibiting any uh, hemophilic symptom. So now is the family map. So family map basically demonstrates the type of relationship family members have among themselves. So basically, Andrea and Andrea's husband, they're having dysfunctional relationship. A single line with a separation represents dysfunctional relationship. Double line uh, represents a healthy functional, healthy or functional relationship. So basically, Andrea and Daniel, they're having healthy relationship. Andrea and Daniel's sister, they're having healthy relationship. Daniel to Daniel's offspring, they're having healthy relationship. But uh, with the Andrea's husband, none of uh, her offspring are having healthy relationship. So this is a basic uh, of a family lifeline, which demonstrates a major event taking place in the family time. So in uh, 1957, Andrea got married and he was, uh, sorry, she was hemophilic carrier and it was unknowingly because she was not exhibiting any, any symptoms. Uh, in 1982, Daniel is born and he was hemophilia affected. In 1983, Daniel was diagnosed with a hemophilia. And in 2010, Daniel got married. And in 2014, Daniel's son and daughter, they were born and son was normal. And daughter was again hemophilic carrier, demonstrating the linear her heritage. Now let's talk about the economic profile of the family. Staggering direct costs from hospitalizations, outpatient visits, and drug treatments. Reduced quality of life, pain and suffering, and the emotional and physical toll on the patient and caregivers. Indirect costs from diminished work, productivity, and absenteeism from work and schools. To understand the utilization of healthcare resources in the treatment. Now comes the environmental profile and what to avoid. Simultaneous injections of coagulation factors and vaccines should be avoided. Switching between coagulation factors, in infections, treatment agents, etc. Et and early prophylaxis with coagulation factors with first year of life should be avoided. Now comes the food preferences. First one is uh, iron-rich food. 
higher enriched foods and sources of vitamin C. Then comes the whole grains like oats, barley, whole wheat, bran, brown rice, or pasta, lower your cholesterol and stabilize blood glucose levels. Then low fat or no fat, like baking, boiling, or grilling instead of frying, and use vegetable oils over butter or animal fats. Avoid hidden sugars and fatteners. And be careful with supplements, like avoid vitamin E, fish oil, ginkgo, biloba, bromelain, flax seeds, garlic, or ginger. Now, the family life cycle. Family with young children, Daniel was diagnosed with hemophilia at very early stage. His mother, Andrea, was aware about, the, about this as she was hemophilic carrier. First order changes in this family are like unexpected cost of family life, creating and maintaining communication system in the family, tapping resources, serving need, emotional and social problem is a trouble yes. phase in child rearing. Second order changes are taking parenting role, facing a problem like episodic medical problem. The next family assessment tool we have is family of God. Basically, a qualitatively measuring tool that can measure the functioning of the family. We have a questionnaire and it is a 10 uh, to 15 minutes pen paper tool that can elicit the person's perception and level of satisfaction on the current state of their family. But it does have some limitations as well. Basically, the data that we obtain is very limited to what the person is willing to share with us. When we did this questionnaire on Andrea, we found out that she thinks that her family is doing well with adaptation, partnership, and affection, but somewhere lacks on growth and resolve. But overall score we got was eight that shows that her, uh, she thinks her family is quite very functional. When we did this questionnaire on Daniel, we find out that he thinks his family is doing very well on adaptation, partnership, and growth, but lacks on affection and resolve. But his overall score was also eight, showing that he thinks that his family is doing quite well, is very functional. Then we have a family of gut part two. Basically, this is used to interpret uh, and it de uh, delineates the relationship with other members and can identify the person who can give assistance to the patient. It basically indicates the conflicts that are not really uh, revealed in the part one. When we did this questionnaire on our patient, Daniel, and uh, we find out that he is living with his mother, Andrea, and his son and daughter, and he thinks that he is uh, getting along well with all of them. The next family assessment tool is screen. Social, resource, and pathology. Daniel, who was not having a well-balanced line of communication with the society, Daniel and Andrea both have been supported from their family. Daniel's mother, that is Andrea, who was a member of the board of directors for approximately two years. Also, Daniel has no intimate relationship with his father, and he used to play with his younger sister and sometimes alone. Cultural resources and pathology. He even does not have any significant role in the cultural activities. Daniel's mother is also involved in her own local hemophilic chapters and she's involved in promoting all the steps in the welfare of the hemophilic patients. Religious resources and pathology. Daniel was a Catholic Christian. His mother visits church every day and joins Sunday masses, while his children visit church rarely on the occasions like the Christmas and the Palm Sundays. Educational. Andrea, who is graduated, Daniel studied up to third year high school. The members of the family had adequate relation, adequate education such that most of the problem encountered were settled satisfact satisfactorily, not burdened by inadequate educational attainments. Economics. The main supporter of the family is Andrea, economically stable family and seems to have no financial difficulties. Daniel also earns in their family. They also had a very large family who lived nearby and provide support to them. They were really satisfied with their parent present economic condition. Medical. Andrea's family have a good health seeking behavior. Daniel and Andrea were 50 miles away from the Mount Sinai Hospital where Daniel received treatment for the hemophilia. They were also provided an on-call cab to transport Daniel to and from the hospital. Coming to the family care plan, when we consider Daniel, as he is our index patient and suffers from hemophilia, his screening must include annual checkup at a hemophilia treatment center along with APTT, PT, and fibrinogen tests. He must avoid physical activities that may lead to injuries and bleeding. Avoiding soft and energy drinks would be a good idea. When it comes to exercises, his duration should not exceed 30 minutes per session, which may include brisk walking and yoga. His dietary caloric intake should be 1725 calories per day, out of which 905.22 calories should constitute carbs and 226.305 calories as fats. Next, we have Andrea, Daniel's mother, who is the very carrier of disorder. Her exercise plan should include walking, yoga, running, and meditation for around 20 minutes per session, which sums up to around two hours a week. Although she is fit and fine, she should consume well-balanced diet containing iron and calcium. Next, coming to Daniel's son, 
is neither affected nor a carrier for the disorder. His exercise prescription is normal with regular cardio exercise, meditation, rounding up to five hours a week, which is general for his age. His diet should include well-balanced, protein-rich foods. Last but not the least, Daniel's daughter, who is a carrier for the disorder, must include cardio and cycling in her daily exercise schedule for 30 minutes, rounding up to four hours a week. Her dietary plan should include protein-rich, balanced diet. Summarizing the case, all families experience challenges and stress in their lives. Financial, social, and psychological demands can occur. They may seem huge burdens on the family. The hemophilia community offers support and advocacy to families living with someone who has the disease. These support systems are easy to reach and comfort the family's need. Thankfully, the internet has made communication easier and people can interact with others having similar challenges. Educational and other livelihood programs must be encouraged with such skills and support. The patients and their families are empowered to maintain strength across life stages in the family unit and help them manage challenges. A huge thanks to all. We Group 11, thank you. Thank Dr. Andres and all the batchmates for their time. Thank you. Where's Mount Sinai? Yes, Doctor. Where is Mount Sinai Hospital? Is this a paper case or you have an index patient? Is this a paper case or you interviewed the patient? Look down. Look down. Look down. Look down. Look down. Look down. Where is Mount Sinai? Yes, sir. So it, this is not your case? This is just a paper case that you saw? Yes, doctor, it's in a paper case. Okay. Ideally, you should interview Oops. your own, make your own, okay? Uh, but, okay, I we will allow, since it's pandemic, you may have limited um, access to some patients. Okay, your genogram should be involved. I, I see that's all. that's a problem again. Uh, what are the components of your genogram? Um, name of the family. When was it done? Index patient, arrow, denoted by the arrow under the square or the circle. Three generations, indicated by a Roman numeral at the side. Okay? Most of you do not forget the legend, etc. But those are important as well. Okay, so you can still improve your genogram as you submit your improved paper next week. Okay, let's have the next. Doctor, group nine would like to present. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Greetings, this is group 9, presenting a family case on Down syndrome. Down syndrome is a genetic disorder caused when abnormal cell division results in an extra full or partial copy of chromosome 21. Our objective for today's case is to formulate, implement and discuss a patient-centered health management plan to describe the family psychodynamics using widely used family assessment tools, discuss the social environment, its resources and hindrances to a successful wellness plan and to be able to formulate a family wellness plan. The outline index case profile, the family, and the family wellness plan. Moving on to the patient's profile, the patient we interviewed is Sophia, a female of age 11 from Impal, Manipur, India, who's suffering from Down syndrome. Her history of illness starts from 2011, when she was born with Down syndrome and atrioventricular septal defect. After six months, she underwent an open heart surgery to fix her ABSD. In the year 2013, she underwent a surgery for pulmonary defect. In the year 2015, she started going to primary school also started a routine visit to a psychiatrist and also joined family counseling. 
In the year 2017, she started physiotherapy and currently is a middle school student. These are the review systems for general skin, respiratory, cardiovascular, head, ear, eyes and throat, gastrointestinal tract, gut, hematology, endocrine, musculoskeletal system, obstetrics and neurology. This slide includes the past medical history of the patient, family medical history, ob history, personal and social history. General physical characteristics of our patients are mentioned in a slide. Of them, the most visible and conspicuous features are shortened extremities, shortened broad hands, and dry skin. Some of the most axiomatic and distinct facial features are flattened facial appearance, flat nasal bridge, shooting nose, and mandible. As you can see in this slide, our patient faces various neurological disorders. They are autistic, their fine motor skills are impaired because of their decreased muscle tone. Their brain volume is reduced and coupled that with um, progressive brain atrophy results in mental retardation. A few other pertinent findings about them, mostly behavioral, is that they avoid eye contact, have slurred speech and repeat their actions. In all of the physical, neurological and behavioral symptoms, the most discernible features which are used as primary impression are mentioned in this slide. After looking through the examinations of the patient, a basic plan is assembled which consists of primarily important immunizations, proper child care, audiologic evaluation for hearing loss of patient and also apnea monitoring to keep a track of breathing rate. In case of a patient Sophia, regular screening is necessary because as she ages, onset of early dementia, epilepsy, hypothyroidism and loss of visual acuity and hearing is subsequent. No restriction of daily activities is needed, but a balanced diet and regular exercise are strictly required to maintain appropriate weight. Family assessment helps in understanding the family's strengths, goals, and priorities and resources. We come across five types of family assessment tools, genogram, type of family, family identification, stage of family in the family life cycle, and family lifeline. The genogram on the screen represents our patient Sophia's hereditary patterns of medical and psychological factors that run through her family. The blue arrow points towards our patient Sophia, who is diagnosed with Down syndrome along with heart disease. Her parents, Sebastian and Rina, have a normal marital relationship and are carrier male and female of Down syndrome respectively. Sophia's two siblings, both females, are carriers of Down syndrome too. Family identification. Sophia's family includes a total of five number of people and the average monthly income of the whole family is 40,000 Indian rupees. Family composition, let's have a detailed look at that. Sophia's father, Mr. Sebastian, is of age 48 and works as a government employee. Sophia's mother, Mrs. Rina, is of age 47 and is a housewife. Sophia's second sister, Lucy, is nine years old and the youngest member of the family, Jennifer, is five years old and is a student too. Sophia's home, along with her two sisters and parents, they stay together in a comfortable but a small house. The house has proper sanitation, large enough living room and also a small courtyard in the front of the house. Clean tap water is available twice a week which is sufficient for all household needs. Overall, the land is quite spacious to accommodate all members. Talking about the family's social history, the father Sebastian is a graduate and had a small business for three years but is now a government employee. The mother is also a college graduate. She also helped him in the small business and is now a homemaker to look after Sophia. Sophia is autistic, has Down syndrome and AVSD, goes to middle school, loves painting and drawing. Lucy, the second child, also goes to the same school. Jennifer, the third child, goes to preschool. The community neighborhood. The family lives in Imphal, the capital of Manipur, where there are lots of people who celebrate lots of festivities. Big gatherings take, big gatherings take place, but Sebastian's family is often outcasted due to Sophia's condition, which they call cursed, but is slowly being accepted. So Family Lifeline is basically a tool that summarizes the history of the family. And this is a family lifeline for Sebastian and Rina's family. They got married in the year 2009. Their first baby was Sophia, born in 2011, with Down syndrome and AVSD. And Sophia had to undergo an open heart surgery for that. In 2013, Lucy was born, and on the same year, Sophia had to undergo another surgery for a pulmonary defect. The family joined counseling and psychiatrist visit for Sophia. And in 2017, Sophia started her physiotherapy. Then the youngest child, Jennifer, was born in the year 2017.
The family is said to be in the stage of families with young children. They had to provide a safe space for Sophia to get a normal childhood. And also her siblings should be made aware of Down syndrome and autism. Sex education must be given importance during her age. The family had to face many social and religious taboos, being looked down by their own relatives and friends. So they attend family counseling and along with the biannual checkups for Sophia. Sophia had been taking psychological therapies for her autism in order to adjust to society and family. Both the parents had to be strong during such hard times and chronic illness such as hypertension has now become a challenge for Sebastian. This is a family map with name, age, and gender representation. About the family dynamics, with the MCA result, we can assess the family is highly functional, with Sebastian and Nina having the decision-making part. They, being the head of the family, had made sure that Sophia, Lucy, and Jennifer feel protected and supported, um, while also ensuring that everyone is respected, valued, and esteemed regardless of their age. Upon further observations, we obtain the following psychosocial data about the family. First, communication pattern. The family has exceptional communication between them. Parents listen to their children and are highly understanding and receptive of their complaints. Leadership role is given to Sebastian. He is also the breadwinner of the family as he is working in a government office. Rina is the primary caregiver. Authoritative figure of the family is Sebastian and Rina. Lastly, the few primary priorities of the family are to give proper guidance to Sophia, encourage her talent in art and to be more independent, and most importantly, to be more financially responsible in order to fulfill the growing needs of the children. I am presenting the topic Family Abgar. It is basically a tool that qualitatively measures family functioning. Abgar stands for adaptation, partnership, growth, affection, and result respectively as shown in the slide. We will score them from 0 to 10 according to their answers, and we will see the answers in coming slides. So in this slide, we have the family Abgar of Mr. Sebastian. It shows that he agrees with almost every questionnaire, but slightly agrees with the adaptation questionnaire. This slide shows the family Abgar of Mrs. Serena, and she agrees with all of the family Abgar questionnaire. We have our patient, Miss Sophia, and she too agrees with all the family of our questionnaire. Lucy too agrees with the family of our questionnaire. Jennifer, the youngest daughter, also agrees with the family of our questionnaire. So here in this slide, we can see that Mr. Sebastian is the source of income in the family. And it also shows that how well each of the family members get along. The family of guys score ranges between 9 to 10, which therefore conveys that they are highly functional family. Clean is a family assessment tool where the physician helps the family members identify and assess the resources to meet a crisis. Starting off with the social part of Scream, Sebastian being the head of the family has a good relationship with his family and people of his community. Wives of the neighborhood like visiting and talking to Rina. Sophia loves talking and spending time with her sister. Moving on to the cultural aspect, Sebastian's family are proud Indians and take act active part in cultural events and festivals. Pathology, their family was often outcasted and avoided during cultural events and festivals. Sophia often faces criticism from her peers. Cultural stigma for Down syndrome is still prevalent. The religious part of Scream includes that all five members of the family are Hindus and they offer prayers and incense twice a day. Pathology, the religion considers genetic disease as a result of karma and is frowned upon by some people following Hinduism. Economic aspect of Scream, Sebastian being the main source of income, gets 40,000 Indian rupees, which is enough for a good satisfactory lifestyle. The family also goes on vacations from time to time. Talking about the educational aspect of Scream, both Sebastian and Rina have a Bachelor of Arts de graduate degree. Sophia and Lucy go to middle school. Jennifer goes to primary school. All the members of the family are literate, but Sophia is often criticized and bullied in her school by her peers for her condition. Medical aspect of Scream, the family has good and easy access to all medical facilities. Lucy and Jennifer rarely get sick. However, Sophia has weak immunity and Sebastian has hypertension. 
Sophia attends medical checkups biannually. Rina is a healthy mother. Family wellness plan for Sebastian for screening, personal hygiene, deliberate monitoring, annual prostate examination, and cholesterol monitoring. For developmental monitoring, mental health, family relationship, sanitation, and exposure. Exercise prescription, cardiovascular, muscle strengthening and growth, walking and yogi exercise for five hours per week. Diet prescription, total calorie requirement for Sebastian is 1,750 calories per day. Actual body weight is 76 kg. Stress, major breadwinner and has to fulfill family needs. Family wellness plan for Rena for screening, personal hygiene, daily BB monitoring, annual breast examination, dental hygiene, and cholesterol monitoring. For developmental monitoring, obesity and premenopausal counseling, mental health, and family relationships. Exercise prescription, cardiovascular and muscle strengthening, walking for 1.5 hours per week. Diet prescription, total calorie requirement for Rena is 1,375 calories per day. Actual body weight, 65 kg, stress, maintaining household while attending her social duties and also lack of sleep. Family wellness plan for Sophia includes screening of her personal hygiene, routine checkups and psychological therapies. For developmental monitoring, monitoring of growth, nutrition, mental health, speech is also required. These are the sets of exercises and daily diet requirements prescribed to Sophia. Approximately 7 hours of exercise a week and intake of around 1350 calories per day is suggested according to her body weight which is only 20 kgs. A plan for balancing stress coming from school life, society and sickness is also essential. Boosting self-esteem and abolishing community stigma is important. Family wellness plan for Lucy includes screening of her personal hygiene, annual periodic checkups and cholesterol monitoring. Developmental monitoring of growth, nutrition, mental health, accident exposure, etc. is required. Diet prescription for Lucy includes 375 calories per day and moderate exercise. Stress-inducing factors for Lucy are to help her mom to take care of her sister and understanding the whole family situation. Family wellness plan for Jennifer includes screening of her personal hygiene, dental checkup, annual periodic checkups and cholesterol monitoring. Developmental monitoring of growth, nutrition, mental health, sanitation and accident exposure etc. is required too. Exercise prescription, a duration of 40 minutes of exercise like walking, jogging, etc. per day, 3 to 5 times a week is suggested. The diet prescription for Jennifer includes 250 calories per day and moderate exercise. Stress inducing factors for to understand situations of the whole family and even school academics. The following are the list of group members who actively participated in making this group project. Okay, some questions. Gar, Thank you. Have a great day. Gar, you applied it on an 11-year-old, 9-year-old, and 5. One with Down syndrome. Don't you didn't you find it difficult to ask these questions? What What's a more appropriate test? So this is what I'm saying. We translated the questions for her. You translated the questions and they were able to answer. Okay. So you could, to assess the family and you use a kid, you could ask the child to draw, draw your family. And there you will see a lot of um, insights on the, of the child. Okay. Quite difficult. Your genogram, you followed the left. Um, arrow, bottom line, but some dates again are missing. Your generational one, two, and three. Okay, it's very interesting that you were able to elucidate problems with your Down syndrome in relation to culture, the stigma that the family faces because one child has disease. Indian culture sees it as karma, right? So that is a good analogy that I saw in your scream part of your um, presentation. And that's good. 
Okay, and you see the differences in culture. For example, if that's a Filipino family or a Filipino doing this patient with Down syndrome, maybe the cultural thing will not be elucidated much. Okay, but again, social stigma, Sophia gets bullied, that happens across generations for someone with Down syndrome. So it's not just the illness, it's the society that we live in that has to understand that it's an illness. And um, of course, the patient or Sophia did not choose to have Down syndrome. All right? Okay, good job. Next group, please. Group six. Can I share group 12 Mom, presentation? Group three will share now, man. One by one. We'll have time for all. Okay. Next. Group three. This video is about Daniel, a 20-year-old Christian youngster living in Chennai. This video is about Daniel, a 20-year-old Christian youngster living in Chennai. Daniel lives in Chennai. He is suffering from asthma, coughing persistently, his afro obstruction. He has asthma for the past five days and he's having allergies right from birth. He is living with his father Luca, his mother Maria, his elder brother George, his younger sister Tessie. Daniel lives in a small house with poor ventilation. It lacked hygiene and there's no supply of electricity. Case profile Daniel's family His father is a high school graduate and he works in a nearby paper industry and he has brother and a elder sister Daniel's father is an atheist while his mother is very religious Luca's father is Joseph and Luca and Matthew are there. Physical examination and environmental profile. Daniel lived in the house with, which is not enough for their family members. Their home is not enough for a single room to sleep and has less electricity supply. And a poor ventilation and lack of hygiene. Environmental profile. There is an industry two kilometers far from house in which his father works. It may cause many airborne problems by emitting pollutants. Maria used wood and charcoal. Economic profile. Daniel family earns 5,000 pesos per month. Since Maria does not work, Daniel. So, out of the 5,000 pesos, 3,000 pesos was given to household expenditure from the 1,000 pesos for food, 500 and 100 are assigned for electricity and water respectively. For medication, 600 pesos. Medical profile, Daniel was coughing for the past 5 days since even though he had the symptoms right from his birth. Lucas, breathing rate is increased to over 30 times per minute. When it comes to chest and lungs examination, recurrent chest tinnitus was examined. Abdominal examination results that abdominal pain due to severe cough, loss of appetite, nausea, and bloating. They only gave the primary medication to him, which was prescribed by the doctor in primary health center. Her own two had Asthma was like Joseph in her character at all. Social history. The drainage and garbage disposal system was also poor. There is an industry nearby which causes airborne problems by emitting the pollutant air. This is about the family data.
health practices. His parents only gave him the primary medications to him, which was prescribed by the doctor. They don't satisfy his medical needs. Luca and George also had allergies. This is the presentation of the family map. Through the family map, we got to examine the relationship existing among the family members of Daniel. Family Lifeline Family Lifestyle Daniel's elder brother has a habit of smoking. He often smokes in their house in front of his brother and sisters. Luca also had a habit of smoking. Daniel's financial issues the family had only two meals a day. George and Daniel have no plan to pursue their studies due to the same. Daniel lived in a house which was not enough for his family members. Their drainage system was also poor. They usually excrete nearby the river. Family life cycle stage. First order change. Daniel lives with his elder brother and one younger sister. Daniel's parents Luca and Maria got married in 1996. Luca had one elder brother Matthew who passed away due to bronchitis and two younger sister Lucy and Nancy. Daniel's family main source of income is coming from Luca's factory work. He earns 5,000 pesos a month for survival of their family. Second order change. Daniel's elder brother had a habit of smoking. He often smokes in front of house, his brothers and sisters. Due to lack of hygiene, improper practices and proper disposal of waste, Daniel and his family had asthma-related diseases. This is about physical examination. This is neurological examination. Family assessment. Identification of family. Family composition. This is the family genogram presented. Scream, the social resource and pathology. Scream, family resources. Survey. Scream Family Resources Survey score is 9, with a severely inadequate family resource. Wisher Wellness Plan. Anyways, Doctor, I'm confused. What is there a continuation of the video or it's done? It's, it's done, ma'am. Okay, you lack the family wellness it's plan, you just include it in your paper. Okay. Uh, uh, we forgot to include it, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Yeah. We will include it. Okay. Before we start the next one, uh, I'm confused. It's from Chennai, but you are in pesos. Actually, we converted it into pesos, ma'am. Are you converted it into pesos? Okay. All right. That's the, the that's the problem. Okay. So, you have asthma, also a genetic disease, and they're in their education, quite lacking. Remember, you have asthma, and still, the family smokes. Could you imagine? So, you just have to in, um, raise awareness that it exacerbates asthma. But why yes, is it? 
Okay. Uh, they are having smoking habits and that has increased their asthma problem. And to think that they're spending money on cigarettes and they just eat two times per day. So that's not healthy as well. Okay. Yes, so, do, so those are things that you could elucidate on as you make your family plan as you submit your paper next week. All right? Okay, ma'am. Let's, let's have the next group. I could imagine because I'm asthmatic, as a little bit of smoke, I'm really irritated and I cannot breathe. And here, they are asthmatic people and yet they find themselves smoking funny. Anyway, let's have the next. What group is this? Doctor, group four will share. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Garvit Yadav from group 12. A family case presentation is formulated by gathering information on a hemophilia patient. We have covered all the necessary objectives to help our case. Hemophilia is inherited bleeding disorder which is caused by a mutation or a change in one of the genes. A person can develop hemophilia later in his life also which is rare in case. The objectives of our case study is that to provide nursing care to the patient using the nursing process and to gain knowledge about the hemophilia conditions and to also know the major complications faced by the person suffering from hemophilia. Profile of our patient is that his name is Sunny and he is 37 year old male. He lives in Malviyanagar, Jaipur, Rajasthan, India and he is married and he belongs to the region Hindi and he is diagnosed from hemophilia. The chief complaints of the patient of hemophilia is that bleeding within the joints which leads to pain and in our case Sunny also developed bleeding within his same joints. Symptoms Bleeding within joints leading to pain and chronic joint disease. Bleeding in the head can cause long-term problems such as seizures and paralysis. Death can occur if the bleeding doesn't stop or if it occurs in a vital organ. Food preference. Iron-rich foods such as spinach, tofu, broccoli, eggs, lentils and chickpea. Whole grains such as oats, barley, whole wheat, bran, brown rice or pasta lower your cholesterol and stabilize blood glucose levels. Low fat or no fat like baking, boiling or grilling instead of frying and use vegetable oil over butter or animal fats. Avoid hidden sugars and fatteners. Be careful with supplements. Avoid vitamin E, fish oil, ginkgo biloba, flax seed, garlic or ginger. Medical history. Father and mother both are hemophilia carriers. After marriage, their son Sunny had hemophilia and after Sunny's marriage, his son is unaffected while his daughter is a carrier. Patient's personal or social history. Smoking, no history. Alcohol, no history. Food habit, three meals a day. Bowl and bladder, normal and healthy. Sleep, proper sleep of six hours in night and two hours in afternoon. Lives with two children and wife. In physical examination of Sunny, we found that he is conscious and coherent with blood pressure of 120 by 80 and the heart rate is 66. Respiratory rate is nearby 18 and the temperature of his body is 36.7 degrees Celsius with the weight 72 kg and with the height 175 centimeter, he has comes the BMI 23.5. And for the diagnosis, we need complete blood count, which is activated partial thromboplastin time test, prothrombin time test and fibrinogen test. For the medication, we need recombinant factor 8 concentrate. First one is hemolibra, also known as ACE910 or amizumab. Second one we need is DDABP or STEMI. Third one we need amaker epsilon amino caprioic acid and fourth one and fourth one we need is cryopresbytate. So what's the family profile of Sunny? His mother and father are hemophilic carriers. Sunny is of course hemophilic. Sunny's son is unaffected. Sunny's daughter is hemophilic carrier. They don't have kidney problem. They don't have diabetes. So in our example, when female and unaffected female and male which were carrier make and did children uh, the male was affected with hemophilic and the female daughter was just a carrier but unaffected and when the hemophilic male married a normal wife then they are uh, in their children the daughter that was six year old was a carrier but unaffected 
while the male was completely normal next family mapping helps to discuss and improve a family's nurturance level not to expose attach or radicalize any member all family experience local or chronic stress over issues like family membership boundaries roles rules and consequences adaptation to stabilizing system well the key relationship is in family that includes minor kids should be between mates versus adults and children or other adults like grandparents or the two ex mates in resolving family problem holistic health integrities and relationship uh, should be the primary goal so family mapping is done to be able to identify the family gene or the family chart in 1981 sunny's mother got married and she was hemophiliac carrier in 1985 sunny is born and he was hemophiliac affected in 1983 sunny diagnosed with hemophilia in 2013 sunny got married and in 2016 sunny sons and daughter born son is normal and the daughter is hemophiliac carrier so in the family life cycle family with young children sunny was diagnosed with hemophilia at a very early stage his mother was aware of uh, this as she was a hemophiliac carrier so what we can see in a first order change it is a unexpected cost of family lifeline creating and maintaining communication systems in the family tapping resources emotional and social problem what we can see in a second order change taking parenting role and facing the problem like episodic medical problem now talking about the family apg ar it is basically the tool through which we can measure the patient satisfaction with the family functioning or the bonding with the family and not the family functioning itself the apg ar stands for adaptation partnership growth affection and resolve now the questions asked from sunny were like i'm happy because i can count on my family for help in times of trouble so i mentioned almost always i am satisfied with the way my family talks to me about my problem he mentioned some of the time i am satisfied and my family accepts and supports my wishes towards the new path for my development he mentioned almost always i am satisfied with the way my family feels their love and they understand my emotions such as anger sadness and love he mentioned some of the time i am happy and my family and i are having with time with each other so he mentioned some of the time now the second thing which was asked to him like to with whom he lives in his home and how much he is bonded with them so the first one was mother he is bonded fairly with her daughter and son he is uh, bonded very well with them and the scores were like if he answered almost mostly so the answer would be two some of the times so the score would be one and hardly ever so the score would be zero now the at last the scores were interpreted as like if the score was from 0 to 3 it would be severely dysfunctional family if it was like 4 to 7 it would be moderately dysfunctional and 8 to 10 it would be highly functional so his score the sunny score was uh, 7 so the agpar score of this family is moderately dysfunctional cream abbreviated as social cultural religious economic educational medicinal social sunny does not have a well balanced line of communication with society he and his mother had got support from their family he has no close relationship with his father he played with his younger sister and sometimes alone cultural he does not have any significant role in cultural activities sunny's mother is involved with a local hemophilia doctor she is involved in promoting all the steps in the welfare of hemophilic patient religious sunny is a hindu his mother visits temple every day his children visit temple rarely on specific occasions like holi and diwali educational sunny's father is a post graduate professor sunny studied up to senior secondary school members of family have advocate education such that most of the problems encountered were settled satisfactorily he is not burdened by inadequate educational attainment 
economic he is the main support the main supporter of the family is sunny's father economically stable family and seems to have no financial difficulties sunny also earns in their family they also had a very big family who lived nearby and provided support to them they are really satisfied with their present economic conditions medical sunny's family have a good health seeking behavior sunny was admitted in the government general hospital near his home where he received treatment for hemophilia family wellness plan all the members of the family must follow a healthy and nutritious diet plan the patient must avoid physical activities as it may lead to injuries treatment must be done adequately the carriers must consume calcium and iron rich food the unaffected should have a well balanced protein rich diet thank you that's all for group 12 part this is very similar to the other group which presented hemophilia I think you had the same source, okay? So if you will make a paper case, make sure that you don't use the same um, source because you you will have limited learning, okay? It's all it's really the same, okay? Also the wordings, also the sequence. You just change the name, okay? So if it was just, I would just have asked you to look for an example of family case presentations on the internet and present. But ideally, you should make your own so that you will apply these tools for yourselves. All right. Next. Dr. Group 16 will present now. Okay, go ahead. There's no sound. Doctor, just a sec, doctor. We'll check. Okay, now. Okay. Okay, just proceed. Ma'am, group four. Yeah. Group four, Madam. Presenting now, ma'am. Okay.
This is the study of a 20-year respected doctor. We are group 4 here to present the family case presentation on the topic diabetes mellitus. This respected doctor. We are group 4 here to present the family case presentation on the topic diabetes mellitus. This is the study of a 20-year-old Indian who is unmarried, unemployed, Hindu and leaves <laughs> He came to the health center with a chief complaint of occasional pain for the past three days. One month prior to the consultation, the patient had mood swings. One week prior to the consultation, he suffered from dizziness, loss of appetite, severe headache, blurry vision, and has tired frequently. Persistent of symptoms made him see consultation. Let's get to know the patient more. Patient Bharat has been diabetic for two years and has been treated with diet plans along with medications including bioquinide less than 200 mg daily. Recently he had a sudden increase in the blood glucose level and has been on medication of sulfonides. He also suffers from allergies. Family Hypertension for all and brother. Asthma for Patient Bharat is a college student who lives with his parents. His diet mainly consists of processed and sugary foods. He is a non smoker, non alcoholic the important findings are unintended weight loss, darkness of skin, numbness or tingling of hands or feet. All other findings find to be normal. Neurological examination showed peripheral nerve damage and numbness caused by increased blood sugar level. This gives a primary working impression of polyuria, polydyspia, polyphagia and weight loss. For diagnosis, the fasting plasma glucose test and the random blood sugar test is administered. Shift to metformin is prescribed for therapeutics and blood sugar level is monitored. Here is the genogram. Patient's great-grandfather died of diabetes mellitus. His grandmother's brother died of hypertension. The patient is the only child. It is evident that there is a strong family history of diabetes mellitus. Next, let's look at the type of family. The patient's family is of extended type and belongs to middle class. The family is patrilocal, democratic, patrilineal, and patriarchal. Patient Bharat is 20 years old and the only child of Arogan and grandson of Gogol. Patient is living with his parents and grandparents. Both his parents are working as professors. Social history. Bharat lived with his grandparents in childhood and shifted to his parents' town along with his grandparents for higher education. His parents would afford all economical, material and educational needs. Community neighborhood. He has a good circle of friends and relatives, but he lacks proper communication with his father. His father, his family members support him emotionally and economically for his medical condition. 2008, Bharat's father faced an accident. 2010, Bharat's mother changed jobs. 2013, grandmother's stroke due to diabetics. 2015, grandfather's heart attack. 2018, Bharat joined a college. 2020, Bharat diagnosed with diabetics. 2021, the treatment in KMZ is going on. Bharat can be said to be in a stage of launching family since he is living with his parents and grandparents. First order change, adjustment to the physiological changes, setting up comfortable home, become responsible and happy with the family, reaffirming values and participation in the community. Second order change, development of adult to adult relationship between grown up children and their parents, dealing with disabilities. This is the family man. Bharat's family type is dysfunctional. Bharat has a good relationship with his mother, cousins, and society. He's not close enough with his father. 
the family communication style is sometimes receptive with distancing the role of leadership belongs to his father and here gender is a factor the role of breadwinner is shared by both mother and father authority is mainly his father bharat's primary caregiver is his mother present priorities of the family is mainly education family apkar gogol adaptation almost always partnership almost always growth almost always affection some of the time resolve always shweta adaptation almost always partnership some of the time growth some of the time affection almost always resolve almost always arogan adaptation almost always partnership always growth almost always affection almost always resolve hardly ever rega adaptation almost always partnership almost always growth almost always affection almost always resolve some of the time bharat adaptation some of the time partnership some of the time growth some of the time affection hardly ever resolve some of the time the total score is 4 which indicates a moderately abnormal family family epigr 2 bharat gets along fairly well with his grandparents poorly with his father and well with his mother scream social resources bharat and his family maintains good relationship with their neighbors and community pathology his family is not always receptive and supportive due to generational differences in experiences and attitudes bharat was discovered discouraged from pursuing sports as a career option cultural resources bharat's family is satisfied with their culture and they take part in cultural events pathology none religious resources bharat's family follows hinduism they attend puja every friday and are aware of religious events in the local community pathology they do not participate in religious organizations economical resources bharat's parents are the only earning members of the family they are a middle class family pathology none educational resources the family is able to finish basic education as both of the parents are working as professors he is active good and his academics are actively involved in sports he has maintained generally good result in his work pathology even though his parents were well educated their knowledge of the basic health was inadequate to protect him from the environment medical resources his family is able to afford medical support medical care is available in his city pathology does not seek regular medical checkup family wellness plan screening daily personal hygiene daily bp monitoring daily diet maintenance monthly self physical examination annual periodic physical examination annual fecal analysis urinalysis cxr cholesterol monitoring development monitoring obesity and mental health counseling health and wellness exercise prescription frequency 3 to 4 times per week intensity target heart rate greater than 86 beats per minute duration 20 to 25 minutes per section type aerobic exercise time approximately 150 minutes per week diet prescription daily caloric requirements 58.5 kg total caloric requirements 1561.25 calorie per day these are the members of group 4 thank you po have a good day doctor you have a diabetic patient so family wellness plan should involve all remember if you have diet restriction for one it's advisable that you have diet restriction for all otherwise your other family member who are he is on a diet will feel very restricted and feel very bad about the diet okay your diabetes would have a lot of repercussions system wise so it's a multi system disease that you also have to know of your genogram can be improved still again generational the title when the date 
genogram was done that could still be improved as you submit your revised uh, presentation or your paper for the next week. Okay, let's have the next. Doc, uh, group 18 is going to present, Doc. Okay. Harsha, uh, share the screen. Doctor, it's not group 18, it's group 6 doctor. Shall we proceed? Okay, proceed. Thank you, Doc. The group 16 will start now. Okay, proceed. Volume, please.
ఏంటి చెప్పురా There's no sound. Akash, share it again with the audio sharing also. Turn on audio sharing. Rafna, everyone. This is yes, family yes. case study by group 13. Next. These are the following group members seen on the screen. Moving to the topic, PCOD, polycystic ovarian disease. It is a medical condition in which the woman ovaries produce immature or partially immature large eggs. And over the time, these become cysts in the ovaries. Due to this, ovaries become large and secret large amount of androgen, causing infertility in regular menstrual cycles, hair loss, and abnormal weight gain. Coming to the outline, First, we'll be talking about the index case fam family profile and then about the patient family. And at the last, we'll be talking about the family wellness plan. Also, to protect the identities, the names mentioned in the presentation will be modified. Next, the index case profile. The general data of patient who is having chief complaint of PCOD. Next. Any over to man. <clears throat> Next slide. So now we are going to talk about the history of the present illness. Our patient Apurva Sharma was diagnosed of PCOD in 2011. She was experiencing oily skin and a lot of acne on her face. She su suffered with severe menstrual cramps and abdomen pain with irregular periods. Her body had started gaining weight. On the other hand, she was facing depression and excessive hair growth too. Therefore, she consulted Dr. Raksha and had an ultrasound scan done. She was prescribed with Clomid clomiphene and had been advised to exercise regularly and maintain a proper lifestyle. Next slide. The next will be the review of systems. In general, she experienced fatigue, increased appetite than normal, no weight loss, only weight gain, and lack of sleep, which is also known as insomnia. No hearing loss, no sore throat, but some nasal congestion and runny nose. In neck, no swollen glands were observed. In respiratory, no dyspnea and wheezing, but some cough. In cardiovascular, there was no chest pain, palpation, nor low blood pressure, neither stroke. Next slide. GI tract, there was no abnormalities observed. In gen genitourinary, there were no changes in bowel habits, nor bloody urine, but decreased urination was observed. In gynecologic, she had irregular and painful periods, but no vaginal discharge. Also experienced tremendous pelvic pain and was non-pregnant. In the context of skin, she had oily skin rashes, changes in hair texture, but no itching. Next slide. In the musculoskeletal, no joint pain, muscle pain, or leg swelling were observed. In neurologic, she encountered occasional headaches and dizziness. No difficulty walking, no numbness or tingling. In psychiatry, she had anxiety with irritability and dealt with depression. No sexual problems or suicidal ideas. Next slide. The past medical history. In 2011, she was diagnosed with PCOD. Uh, no diabetes mellitus was observed or asthma. Thus, some dust allergies were reported. Symptoms such as fatigue, dizziness, anxiety, and irritation were also observed. Next slide. In family medical history, her paternal grandpa suffered with cardiovascular disease. Her maternal grandpa suffered with diabetes mellitus and hernia. And maternal grandma with goiter and chronic of the obstructive pulmonary disease. Next slide. And her father Vinay suffered with asthma and mother Shweta with arthritis. Moreover, her maternal aunt was diagnosed with asthma and thyroid 
and her cousin Anushka suffered with the same disease PCOD, which is our topic today. The presentation is over to Saksham. Now we are going to talk about menstrual obstetric history. It includes menarche, that's the first occurrence of menstruation, which is at the age of 11 years, irregular monthly periods lasting for about seven to eight days, frequent dysmenorrhea, that is menstrual cramps, and no previous sexual contact. Personal and social history. The individuals are segregated or grouped according to their personal and social history, like medical students, non-smokers, non-alcoholic, doesn't do drugs, live different places. So by these, we categorize people into different groups so that we can study in detail about their problems. Physical examination of the patients or suspected individuals include height, weight, BMI, temperature, skin, chest and lungs and heart. These are the readings taken from a patient. And physical examination also includes abdominum and extremities checking. Neurological examination is the assessment of the sensory neuron and motor responses. Cranial nerves are involved in the following function or activities. And these are the readings of the cranial nerves shown through our examination. Next slide. Next. Assessment. First, we will talk about the diagnostic assessment of the PCOD. First, we will perform ultrasound scan or the pelvic exam through which we will know better about the disease. Therapeutics. For example, clomid, clomiphene, a 50 mg tablet, which is taken once a day for five days, was found to be useful in this problem. Non-pharmacological ways include avoid refined carbs, fried foods, other unhealthy food items, follow a balanced diet, have a regular schedule of exercise, keep track of menstrual cycle. Follow up with a gynecologist once in every two months and consultation from a well-established medical profession. Thank you. And now I would like to hand over the presentation to Deepshika. Thank you. So the next topic that we're going to cover in this presentation will be the patient that is a Povis family. The family structure and function will further cover a few topics, namely genogram, which is basically a diagram illustrating a person's family members, how they're related and their medical history, the type of family, family identification, stages in the family life cycle, and family lifeline. We'll be looking at the family psychodynamics via a few tools such as mapping, family psychosocial data, family app bar and stream. The family app bar draws its name from a five-item measure of perceived family support in the domains of adaptation, partnership, growth, affection, and resolve. The next slide, family structure and function. As you can see on the slide, we have a genogram of our patient slash informant Akova's family. There's a clear family history of various comorbidities such as diabetes mellitus, cardiovascular diseases, and chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, or COPD, from both sides of her family. The next slide, please. The type of family. A Pulvis family is a nuclear family. As such, it consists of herself, her parents, and any siblings. Socioeconomically, they're a middle-class household, and their family setup is described as democratic. The next few slides will give us a rundown of the family identification as we look at each member of this nuclear family individually. Firstly, we have the father, Vinay, who is an only child. Next, we have the mother, Shweta. The next, we have the eldest child, who is Apuva, our patient herself. And lastly, we have Nisha, which is the youngest child of the Sharma family. The next slide, please. The household boasts of several other positive markers, for example, a living room, proper electricity throughout the house, clean and hygienic toilets with proper water supply, well-furnished bedrooms, a kitchen with proper water supply, a dining section. Family psychodynamics. This therapy is an approach to therapy that integrates interest in the unconscious aspects of individuals' personality, development, and function with an interest in the social context and especially the family context. Next one is mapping. In the slide, Sharma family mapping is shown. There are two different families in which Shweta and Vinay Sharma are married and having a daughter named Apurva. Next one. Family dynamics. Apurva's family is functional. Apurva lives away from her parents, Vinay and Shweta. She also has a younger sibling named Nisha. 
she has always been given much love and attention right from childhood as she was the first child they have a good relationship with each other next one is psychosocial data this includes emotional mental and physical health of a person it also includes the person's perception of themselves and their ability to function in the community uh, next one uh this includes a first one communication pattern they communicate with each other frequently about their thoughts and activities second one leadership apurva's father vinay sharma leads the family and here age is a factor third one is breadwinner apurva's father vinay sharma is the breadwinner of the family and he is a doctor and supports apurva financially fourth one is authority authority mainly conferred on apurva's father vinay sharma fifth one is primary caregiver apurva's mother shweta sharma is the primary caregiver of the family and the last one family's present priorities the family's main priorities are apurva's treatment and her education thank you handing over to garima next topic is family avatar which is used to assess the adult satisfaction with social support from family the avatar score is based on the total of 1 to 10 of which 7 to 10 suggest highly functional family whereas 4 to 6 suggest moderately dysfunctional and 0 to 3 suggest severely dysfunctional the scores are calculated based on the questionnaires which include five functional components of the family avatar and they are adaptability partnership growth affection and resolve moving on to the next slide Here we can see that the Abgar score for Apurva, which is eight, that is based on the five questionnaires listed here, in which Apurva seems to be almost always satisfied with the family, except the last one, which states that she is not satisfied with the time that she shares with her family as she lives far away from them for her studies. Her overall score eight can be comprehended as highly functional family. Moving on to the next slide, for Vene. Apurva's father the score is perfect 10 that means he is always satisfied with her family as he is always um, and this results give the high, the result of highly functional family moving on to the next slide for shweta that is apurva's mother again the score is perfect 10 which gives us the result of the highly functional family moving on to the next slide for family abgar 2 two questionnaires are discussed first one is who lives in your family and the second is how well do you get along with your family for apurva uh, she shares good relationship with shweta who is her mother aged 49 and she very well gets along with her mother and with vinay who is her father and he is 50 years old she also gets along with him very well next slide for vinay he also shares very good relationship with his wife Shweta, who is 49, and with his daughter Apurva, who is 21. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Same goes for Shweta, as she also shares very good relationship with her husband Vena, who is 50 years old, and Apurva, who is her daughter, who is 21 years old. Passing on to Ayushi. Thank you. Uh, let us talk about Scream. It is an acronym that represents family resources and is a tool. school where the family physician helps the family members identify and assess their uh, lack of resources it can also serve as a kind of pathology in certain situation it stands for social cultural religious economic education and medical in the next slide we are going to talk about the social resources since apurva is a student she spends time studying going to college and talking with friends and family in the next slide we'll talk about the cultural resources the family is comfortable with the place she lives in her parents have been living there for the most of the year next religious resources apurva is a hindu and she visits temples wherever she has an opportunity to celebrate most of her special days in the next slide we're going to talk about economic resources main source of income is from her father स्क्रीनिंग डेली पर्सनल हाइजीन 
daily BP monitoring and annual transvaginal ultrasound scanner. See, in the next slide, we are going to talk about developmental monitoring, mental health, lifestyle changes, family relationship, accidental approaches, exposure and prevention, and obesity. Uh, in the next slide, we are going to talk about ex exercise prescription given to Apurva. That is, five days uh, must be the frequency. Duration is 45 minutes per session and intensity should be moderate. Type of must be uh, aerobic exercises, which would approximately take 3.5 to 4 hours per week. Uh, next is the diet prescription given to a Purva. That is, total calorie requirements per day is 1200 calories and uh, which would be uh, divided into carbohydrate, protein, calcium, sodium, iron, and total fat. And actual body weight of a Purva is 75 kilograms. I would like Ayush to continue with the presentation. Now we are going to talk about Vinay Sharma, the father of Abu Vashar. The doctor, the doctor screened the, his daily personal hygiene, monthly BP and cholesterol checkup, and monthly blood sugar level checkup. Doctor also monitored his family relationship, weight counseling, and his mental health. Doctor prescribed him some exercise which included 40 minutes of section for five days per week with a moderate intensity and which included walking, playing badminton, yoga and other simple exercises. Doctor prescribed him a diet which included 1950 calories a day, carbohydrates, proteins, calcium, sodium, iron, total fat and his actual body fat was 80 kgs. Vinay Sharma was facing some financial issues and he was taking care of a Puva and his studies and uh, work stress. Now we are going to talk about Shweta, the mother of Apurva Shal. Doctor also, uh, doctor also screened her with her daily personal hygiene and annual physical examination. Her developmental monitoring was done with weight counseling, mental health and food habits and also family relationships. Doctor prescribed her a diet that included 1650 calories a day, uh, carbohydrates, proteins, calcium, sodium, iron, and total fat of 16 grams. And her actual body weight was 69 kgs. Doctor prescribed her exercises, which included 45 minute session a day for five days per week with a moderate intensity. And the type was diaphragmatic breathing and other simple exercises. Shweta had stress about children's education and household course. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we have your PCOD, one of our genetic diseases affecting menstrual um, cycle of women, uh, closely linked to diabetes, Okay, so again, your genogram, please improve. Okay, other Akbar and Swim, you already included. Okay, let's have the next one. Ma'am, group one would like to present. Okay. Doctor, group six can present. Okay. Okay, ma'am, present. A warm welcome to Dr. Andis and all my classmates. For our family case presentation, we collected all the information of the patient suffering from sickle cell anemia. First of all, I'd like to give an overview to formulate in the discuss a patient centered and to describe the family's psychodynamics to describe the social and issues and general justice and finally to formulate a family wellness plan. The outline of this PPT is in this case profile, the family, family wellness. 
is Nan and Jalan. Here we are going to talk about a patient named Cecilia who is 29 years old female. She is unmarried and Roman Catholic and independent woman. OB history. Cecilia had menopause at 19 years old. She had regular periods which was lasting for 5 days. She had occasionally infections and no previous sexual contact. History of present illness. In 2015, Cecilia had suffered from malaria with symptoms of headache and feeling of discomfort. In 2017, she had symptoms like weight loss, palpitations and fatigue, which resulted in hyperthyroidism. In 2018, 2019 and 2020, Cecilia had faced uncontrolled blood pressure, asymptomatic and usual blood pressure is 140 by 90 and highest blood pressure is 160 by 100. In April 2021, she had frequent infections, painful swelling in the hands, so that she consulted a private MD doctor in St. Luke's Medical Center. This is a family history. If you consider the review of systems, she had no weight loss and no loss of appetite. Instead, she, she had weight gain. Her skin texture was very good without any rashes, lumps, dryness. Her respiratory tract was also very well without any cough and dyspnea. She had not faced any chest pain, palpitations, no PNB. Her gastrointestinal tract was functioning very well without any abdominal pain, nausea, or warm things. Her gut was also very well functioning. Past medical history of Cecilia. In 2019, she was admitted at Cedrus's medical clinic with no bronchial asthma, no diabetes 1, and no tuberculosis. Let's discuss about personal and social history. Cecilia is a college graduate who is neither alcoholic nor drug addict. She is a non smoker who lives with parents. Also, she is self employed and her diet consists of two eggs and weekly twice a week. Moving on to physical examination. General examination says that she was conscious, coherent, and not in cardiorespiratory distress. Her BP was around 140 by 90 mmHg, weight was 55 kg, height 156 cm, and her skin was of good type. Physical examination of chest and lungs includes symmetrical chest expansion with clear breath sound. Abdominal pain usually happens when fecal cell usually blocks blood flow and prevents oxygen delivery. Extremity states that painful swelling in the hands and feet. Next, neurological examination. It states that anemia occurred in less than 36% female. Our patient reticulocyte was 13.3%. Autoimmune agglutinin disease, membrane defect, hereditary spherocytosis, and abnormal HP signals. No, 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 no. And patient treated deficiency, pyruvate identification. Moving on to primary working information uncontrolled blood pressure with low number of red blood cells. And plan includes diagnostics and therapeutics. Family assessment. Family structure and function includes genogram, type of family, family identification, stage in the family of life cycle, and timeline. Coming to family psychodynamics, it includes mapping, family psychosocial data, APCA, and scheme. This is the classic representation of family genogram. It is a pictorial display of person's family relationships and medical history. Type of family includes the characteristics such as extended family, first child, middle class, and democratic. Identification of family includes the composition of Cecilia Reyes, which is known as first child, and second one is Elaine Reyes, which is known as second child. Cecilia Reyes has a home with two bedrooms, a living room, a dining area, a kitchen with sink within the kitchen. Celia Rice has graduated from the Bakur National High School and also graduated engineering from the Adams University of Engineering and finally an employee of a global company. Pamplona, you know, is locality in Las Pinas. A peaceful park is located one kilometer away from the house and other park is located three kilometers away from living hood. Family lifeline states that in 1995, death of Cecilia Reese grandfather and in 2000, the death of Cecilia Reese grandmother. Family life cycle states that it's very hard to share a single room and also arise of financial crisis due to middle class family. 
Reyes family had faced their grandparents earlier in the family cycle and they have to be careful with their family member. This is the family map of the patient. In Reyes family, after the death of the grandparents, many relatives gave their consultants to the family members and they also faced little problems. Finally, they are now all set and get out of the situation. Psychosocial data includes that the Reese family's communication style is very respective and the leadership role belongs to the family's eldest, Joseph Rees. The winner role is shared by the father and also helps their family to maintain financial problems and studies of their children. While coming to the other P is mainly of father and mother. Psychosocial data, primary caregiver. Grace Rice is the main caregiver of the family. Family present prior priorities to maintain their health and to focus on their career. The family of Gerber is a measure of family satisfaction and dissatisfaction. According to this, the Joseph of score is 9. And the Gracie score is 9. Angelina's score is 10. According to the result of family but by the source is Rhea, the Sicilia family was a healthy family. What scream describes social, cultural, religious, economic, educational, medical issues? Now coming to social interaction of the family members. It is good enough with society or extra familial groups such as friends, neighbors, and members of the community. This family had experienced ethnic inferiority and have been subjected to live in an area of poor conditions. They have cultural pride and they have been following the traditional values since ages. Regarding religious, resource, and pathology, when a family has been subjected to their own religious beliefs, physicians must consider their ethical questions regarding contraception, abortion, and blood transfusion. A physician must be aware of family's financial status to suggest a medical plan for the issues. So, if the family is able to bear financial crisis, that should be provided for their medicals. So now, we are going to be discussing about the different objectives of the family meals plan. And these objectives include physical health, nutritional health, self-care and management, safety, emotional and relational health, environment, sexuality, and intellectual wellness. We would be dealing with each of these objectives in detail. So the first one is physical health. The factors which affect the physical health of the family include the yoga, running, house cleaning, and walking. The next objective is nutritional health. The family also has to cope up with the different nutritional needs in spite of their economical status, which comprise of the nutritious food, drinking water at regular intervals, essential fatty acids which are obtained from food such as oily fish, nuts, and avocados. The nutritional needs also require the right amount of protein intake that is needed for the cell maintenance and repair. Vitamins also will play a very important role, which includes the fat-soluble and water-soluble vitamins. Essential minerals like iron, calcium, and zinc are essential for the family's nutritional health. Nutritious foods containing plant derivatives like the phytochemicals, which will protect the individuals against diseases like diabetes, cancer, arthritis, and osteoporosis. The next objective is self-care management. The family must also make sure to have a good self-care management in the society and with the people around. They must try their best to maintain good friendship with the community members. They should be getting a good and consistent exercise or workout daily by maintaining the proper diet as well. Families should also make sure that they are generous and kind to others. They should ensure to have a good amount of sleep and maintain that treasure. The family can also indulge in relaxation and figure out the activities that they would find moderate and relaxing. The next object is regarding emotional and relational health. The healthy families with emotional stability have some habits that they do on a regular basis. Reyes family is also an emotionally healthy family. These set of habits include listening to your family members, establishing boundaries that define and protect each member's right and thought in the family. These families have a certain way of associating with and relating to each other, and these corresponding to and creating 
and nurturing a firm environment. They set solid and firm but yet healthy limits and have clear expectations around the behavior of their own and the behavior of, of other members in the family. They have the potential to understand the importance of communicating their boundaries with empathy, respect, and being generous to others. Family wellness plan, sexuality. As you know, sexual health is the biggest part of the life and it can be affected by other aspects of the health. This will include the physical, mental, emotional, and social health. Being in good sexual health means you are well informed carefully and respectfully to yourself and other. Family wellness plan. Intellectual wellness. It will inaugurate your mind to knowledge, discover, and the expanding your world. That makes you curious to learn, and this leads to to surprise the discoveries that enhances your memory power, recall, and concentration. Summary. Presence of health problems should be recognized by having adequate knowledge and decisions about health and necessary action should be made. Family must be educated about proper diet and cleanliness and healthy lifestyle to prevent the risk factors of the disease. Doctor, group 19 will present, Doctor. Doctor, group 2 can okay. be present. Okay. They've already in mentioned your, the chat box. In your chat box will be the attendance for the forms. It's also in the chat box in the YouTube okay. live. So okay. don't forget to um, fill up the attendance form. Okay, we'll have our last group. Then we will continue next. Then we will continue next um, Thursday. Okay. Attendance is in your chat box, both Zoom chat and YouTube live. Okay. Okay, let's have our last group for this afternoon. Gusto mo lang tatanggalin yung t-shirt. Gusto ko minsan natutulog na. Ayaw kong patanggal. There's no sound. There's no sound. Could you remedy?
Ma'am, can you hear this voice presentation? It's very unclear. If you can't make it work, we'll just have it next week. We'll finish the rest of the reports on next Thursday. So you'll have a chance to fix it. Don't forget to okay. sign on the attendance forms. It's in the Zoom chat and it's in the YouTube link. Okay. So we've had a lot of your family case presentations. Common mistake, your genogram. Okay, go back to how a genogram is supposed to be constructed. You have to have the name of the family, the date. You have generations depicted by the Roman numeral, index patient, your family relations, etc. Okay, the Apgar and the Scream, you more or less know how to do, and the family lifeline common mistake of the groups, it's really in the genogram. All right? So that's it for this afternoon. So we'll, uh, we'll see each other again on Thursday. Okay, you may leave this call. Don't forget to sign in your attendance. Mm -hmm. okay. so you may leave this call. Okay. Um, you may edit your work, the paper. You don't need to edit the video, the corrections. Just make sure that it's reflected in the paper that you will submit next week or the week after. Uh, for to be fair, um, the ones who presented will have a week to submit, so they have to submit next week. The ones who will present next week will submit the, the next next week before. We take our midterm exams. All right? So you may leave this call. Thank you. Let's see each other on Thursday. Yes. Doctor, the report, uh, we only have to submit it, right? We don't have to present it in the class, right? No more, no more. Okay. 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 All right.